Hello, good evening. It's Monday, October 15th, and thanks for joining us on PM Express. We are grateful uh, that you've kept faith with us. Uh, we must say that Nia De Clark, who is a previous host of our show, won the Radio and Television Personality Award for the Current Affairs Talk Show Host of the Year, and that we give to you as an honor for keeping faith with our show. Tonight, we're pitching the NDP against the NDC. As you may have heard, former President Rawlins' uh, public support of his wife. The question we'll ask ourselves tonight is that, is this going to be his undoing? He's fated for expulsion. And we would ask whether he's still relevant after his Congress pronouncements at the NDP Congress, which acclaimed his wife, um, Nana Kunedo Ajman Rawlins as the flag bearer. Now, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlins showed open support for his wife. And the obvious endorsement is sending, appears to be sending him downhill. Now, is his appearance at the NDP Congress and subsequent backing of Nana Kunedo Ajman Rawlins going to plunge him into an abyss that will end his political relevance? Well, can one lose his own party because of agreed rules? Meanwhile, President Mahama is saying that the NDC is unfazed by the Rawlinses move. Doom for NDC or good riddance? We'll find out here on the show. You can join us with your comments, suggestions and questions by text 1760 or you can post them on our Facebook wall. Tonight, I'm honored to have with me in the studio Deputy Energy Minister Inusa Fusseini. And then I have the Deputy Communications Manager of the NDP, Dr. Hilarius Abiu, also joining me. Head to head in the studio. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, let me start with you, uh, Honorable Inusa. You, have, you are reported to have said that you will lead a campaign to expel former President Rawlings from the party. Are you keeping to this? Well, thank you, uh, uh, Stephen Ante. Uh, that, that was an, in answer to your question. I thought on Saturday when I had the opportunity to talk on what was the developments within the NDC and the NDP, the position of former President Rawlings as regards his support for his wife and keeping with the tenants of the NDC constitution, of which he has said he is a member, and and he didn't say he's a member constitutionally. Well, he said just that he's, no, he's a founding no, no, member no, no, of no, your no. party. I'm, I'm not, Article six of Article your constitution. constitution yes, so. yes. I'm not saying that I'm oblivious of the provisions of Article six. I'm just recouching what he said when he met Nana Kufadu. Okay. Yes, he said it. He's still a member of the party. I mean, I would, Article 6 still in the Constitution, former President Rawlings can elect not to be a member of the party. I mean, so I would just, as, 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 as a political party, I have manifest belief and deep interest in the NDC. I believe that the NDC is the social political vehicle that can lead to the development and transformation of this country. Based on the egalitarian principles of the party, the ideology and philosophy of the party. And this philosophy, ideology, took root when former President Rawlings came onto the scene uh, in, in 1990, 1981. And in 1992, when we went democratic, the principles that he stood for crystallized into the principles of ideology of the NDC. And it still is. And it still is. And, and so, and these are social democratic principles. I mean, NDC is an all-inclusive party. It's, a, it's an amalgam of people of varying political backgrounds. So you wouldn't lead the crusade for his expulsion what I'm anymore? Saying is that, no, what I'm saying is that because we went democratic and we elected onto ourselves a constitution to regulate the conduct. He can only be expelled through that constitution, constitution process. So, I mean, what, where comes in the fact that he has been notified of his expulsion pending a neck uh, decision? No, he has not been. I, I'm not aware of any notification to him. I mean, saying that okay. he. Yeah, we I'm not aware we of now that. have Mr. Adams, Kofi Adams, who is a spokesperson for the former aware. president oh. online now. Good evening, sir, and thanks for your time. 
Good evening. Are we going north or south in relation to former President Rawlings? His declaration of support for his wife and his continuous membership of the party he founded. What do you mean by declaration of support? Do you have anything to prove that? That are you, are you President Rawlings have declared support to any candidate? Is it not obvious? Has he not said at Congress that he supports the candidature of his wife? He didn't say that? Did you hear that? I did, yes. Can you play that back? Well, if you didn't hear, you can go on to tell me uh, directly that he has not declared support for his wife. So That's fine. Are you, going to, are you going to play that to the hearing of the people because you have asked the question? That yes, I, if I, that I, 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 I will find it and play for you, but now I don't have it right in front of me to play for your hearing, but it's been playing all over on the airwaves, and I'm surprised if you haven't heard it. And how, what did you hear as the endorsement, if you can help me? Just, just tell me, is is the no, former no, president Rollins? Can help me. Yes. What you had as the endorsement for, based on which you are asking your question. Right. The, the former president has said that he will support his wife's candidature in his her pursuit to lead the N NDP. He has said that. That he will support the wife if she decides to become a candidate for another party. That is that, that, is, that is that the same as saying that you support the. The candidature does it mean differently you can tell me i mean i'm asking you the question now you're because throwing it, it back at me in a sense that if I you say, feel that if yeah. i say if i say i support you moving to uh, another station to go and work there does that mean that i support that station okay so if the former president Rawlings said he will support the candidature of his his wife if she decides to lead the candidature of another party. That's correct, right? They said he would support the wife if she decides to take over the candidature of the and she, and she And she has. She has accepted the candidature of the NDP. And, and, and he has not asked her why, why, why should you go and accept the candidature of the NDP. He has not said so. So Have you what, heard what form? Accuse her? Right. Have you heard him... Have you heard him accuse her that why did you go for the candidature of the NDP? Or you That's... expected him to have stopped her from taking the candidature right. of the NDP? So, Ms. Adams, the simple question I'm asking you is that after declaring support for the candidature of the wife, where does he stand? It's a simple question, really. You, have, you, you, you don't even need to ask that question because you are not asking any simple questions. You are creating questions in your mind and going ahead to ask them that don't exist. So were, the you expecting him, were you expecting him to have told the wife that don't go and contest and that okay, I don't support so, that, you want to go and contest? Right, great, fantastic. You've made your point. So now tell me, I mean, from now on, what is the position of the former president in relation to the NDP? He's finished his relationship with them. He's indicated clearly when he spoke, or you didn't hear him, when he said on that same platform that he is not leaving the NDC. Or you didn't hear him say so. Well, I mean, I heard him, and then I'm asking you. Uh -huh. so, so then why would you then ask, where, where is he now? When he has stated clearly himself that he's not leaving the NDC. Okay, so what now becomes of the support he supports the wife's candidature. What becomes of it now? That is why he has not asked the wife to withdraw from contesting. So she's the candidate. Have you heard them throw any blows at each other? No. So I'm asking you, uh, Ms. Adams, now that the... I, I, I'm asking again because this comes on the back of the fact that this is a husband and a wife. And through fairness and democratic principles, the wife has every right to lead or to take, accept the candidature of any political party. That's, that's not in question. But the question is, is it a big deal now, seeing that Mrs. Rollins will be leading the NDP and Mr. Rollins who is still a member of the NDC? Right. We have many many MPs whose wives are in other political parties. We have many persons who are, very, are occupying various positions whose spouses are in other political parties. 
I have had and I've worked with NBC constituency chairman, a regional chairman whose wives are also in other political parties. What is wrong with that? We've had persons whose fathers were chairman of parties, whose sons were members of other parties. What is wrong with that? Right. So the point now is that the NDC has expressed willingness to expel the former president from the party because of this open declaration of support of the wife's candidature of any political party if she chooses. It and that's, and that's really of, we're discussing. It is this type of loose talk from members of the party that has brought us into this worst situation where we have never had such a huge number of independent candidates contesting against party candidates. Because everybody gets up and just opens his mouth and says anything that he wants to say without even analyzing what is happening, without even waiting for the act to take place, they, they are talking. First and foremost, in terms of looking at a party structure, you, you have from, from under chapter one, from article one all the way down to six, we deals with the party structure, the party's name, the party's motto, the party's philosophy, the uh, party's symbol, the uh, establishment of the party. And it's so clear who, whose vision led to the establishment of the party and who is called the founding father of the party. So how do you take out your founding father? You don't take out your founding father, which is a constitutional provision by a mere talk of what? Persons or by mere meeting of neck. But you don't think it's the, A constitutional provision of the party which, which recognize and identify a founding father of a party can only be dealt with by, by Congress, not by neck, right. or by anybody's wish. Right. And two, there is, there, is, there is no indication anywhere that President Rollins has breached any provision of the party. Is it not the fact that we are having a lot of independent candidates contesting against party candidates, some of whom are sponsored by party executives. We have had the Jokuku constituency in Greater Accra here, the candidate complaining every time that you have a national vice chairman in the person of Daniana, you have the incumbent MP, uh, Nino Tedia, supporting an independent candidate who was a former constituency vice chairperson. Are we not having a situation where in the Kote Kole constituency, a former co contestant is contesting against Niyama Shite? Are we not having problem in Ada? Are we not having problem in Niko Pram Pram? Are we not having problem in uh, KEA? Today, we are talking about uh, BBN constituency, uh, Okaikwe North constituency, where there are now two candidates. We have all manner of problems everywhere. And they say, as a result of the failure of leadership to do what is right, this is the situation you have on the ground. And if care is not taken, NDC candidates are going to lose to independents or sometimes even lose to the NDP. And they sit down there, instead of identifying this problem and dealing with, they say you have, you have breached by parties' uh, 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 regulation and guidelines. Which, which guidelines? Which constitution? Says that when you have done something that is real on the ground, nobody should talk about it. The founders should not talk about it. Which part of the constitution says so? That when you are seeing visible signs of people contesting as independent all through against party candidates because you did not use due, the due process. The, the process of selecting candidates was fraught with all kinds of uh, uh, confusion and money vote buying and the rest. The founders should not talk about it. Right, Mr. Kofi Adams, I'll have you hold on there and uh, I'll come back to the studio to Honorable Inusa for saying you've, you've heard a lot from what Kofi Adams says. Tell me now, what is the party's position on these pronouncements from the founder of the party at the Congress platform of a different political party? Well, Auntie, I cannot pretend, and I have no pretensions, that I represent the National Executive Committee of the party on this platform. Indeed, I am not a National Executive Committee member. My relationship with the party at the national executive level is limited to my membership of the legal committee of the party. Now, all I said, and I still say that because it took pains, nines of hard work, to be able to come up with an NDC constitution that has endured. 
Now, every social grouping will have to have a framework to regulate the conduct of your members. I mean, and if you don't have it, you will go back to the days of Thomas So Fox. you have the framework to regulate framework, such a conduct. If you don't have a framework... A conduct of the founder. For, Constitutionally members, mandated you don't, you don't You don't separate members and say founder. No, it's members. We're talking about members. So in given my... If you go to read what I said on Saturday, there were a lot of hypothetical cases there. Because I recall that as a member of the legal committee and the constitutional committee of the party, in, in looking at amendments to the provisions of a party, we even said that under no circumstance will the party support a presidential candidate because we do not contemplate a situation in which we will not have a presidential candidate. Now, two, as a member of the party, an executive officer of the party, it will be out, it will be misplaced. Indeed, you will be committing a sacrilegious offense if you endorse a candidate. So what you're saying party. is that former President Rawlings has committed a sacrilegious offense well, have, for endorsing the candidature Adam, of Adam's, his wife. Listening to Adams, he did not endorse. Listening to Adams. He did not endorse. He did not endorse. And I was saying that you can endorse. You can say, as founder of the NDC, I endorse the candidature of the of the of the, oh, the night, I, I will support no, I my endorse, wife I endorse, if she endorse, chose to accept the leadership I position of any the, political party what I'm outside is that, the one I founded. Sivante, if former President Rowling says that as founder of the NDC, I endorse the candidate. Then he will be committing an offense. Committing. So as far as he'll you be know, violating, not he's offense. not violating. He will be violating certain provisions of, of the Constitution. Your party. So let me, Do not be an let, let me come to It MD, will not have any MDP. criminal implications. It will be that by that declaration, he will be removing himself automatically. Are you worried? The Let me the ask you a simple question. Are you worried about these developments and pronouncements from the former president a few months to elections? He said quite a lot. Well, I'm worried. Including describing people following the president I'm, I'm, as evil old dwarfs. Is he not kicking your, your campaign in the foot by making it impossible for your party to chart a new direction to win this election? I'm worried, and that is why the but the, the, the constitution also provided for the establishment of the membership of the Council of Elders to solve problems. So, so far, region. there is no solution. Yet, well, there's no solution because former President Rawlings is the chairman of the Council of Elders. Well, let me come to NDP. Uh, Dr. Habibu, are you worried about these developments? Of course, you've just... Uh, uh, choosing your flag bearer, your party's flag bearer, and the person of Nana Kunedu Ajiman Rawlings. And it's fair for her husband to, to be behind her. I mean, behind every successful man is, is a woman, and behind every successful woman is a man. Uh, are you seeing these trends as worrying for your party's chances? Well, um, I, I just want to say that, uh, first of all, uh, we are not worried. Uh, at all about the developments that are happening within the NDC and the, the developments happening within the NDC is only uh, a prediction of what is possible to happen in the future within the country Ghana itself. Now, How do you mean? Um, the point really is this. Once you have an institution that fails to recognize or manage internal criticisms like the NDC, if you be no, but, specific. But this time you are talking about MP, NDP. No, he's asking the questions regarding the NDC. No, I think that's where you're coming from. No, no so, yeah, I mean, the, I'm the, saying that for your party, yeah. as to having chosen your flag bearer, yeah. and then these rippling developments behind the scene, you should be worried, right? No, but these events are happening within the NDC, not within the N NDP. Well, but it has, it has a, an arm stretch to yours, because this we're talking about the husband of your flag flag bearer? Well, I, I think that the, the subject matter we are dealing with, particularly concerning the support of the former President Rawlings for Nana Kuridu Ajima Rawlings, goes beyond the relationship of a husband and a wife. What does it then? Indeed, if you listen to the comments of the former president, the first time he made some public uh, declarations to the effect that uh, he would uh, 
throw his weight behind the wife if she decides to accept the candidacy of the NDP. He premised that statement on grounds of principles. And he has said that the NDC, which he is the founder of, came into the political scene, you know, with a very high moral high ground. And he thinks that as a founder, that moral high ground has is lost. whittled away. Precisely. And obviously, despite every attempt he's made, you know, to restore that high moral ground to the NDC, he hasn't been successful. Now, if he finds that there's a new political party, you know, that in his view is, is, is aspiring or has those um, high moral grounds compared with the NDC, he would have no difficulty at all, you know, throwing his weight behind that political party. The same way he would do to any other candidate, you know, that stands by and, sound and moral any principles. Other political party. Precisely. Said, yeah. So so his weight throwing his weight behind Anakoni Rajman Rollins goes beyond the relationship of husband and wife, but largely based on, on the principles of probity, accountability, social justice, which are the same principle he's always been preaching since 1979, and he hasn't deviated to the left or to the right. And as far as I know, uh, in all my adult life, I think he's the most consistent politician okay. that so ever what is, existed. What is, what is your party's core ideology? Let me ask you. Is it based on the same ideology of the role of um, former President Rawlings, which formed the NDC? Yeah, certainly. It is? Certainly. So you would really love it if he joined your party? Oh, why not? Why not? Because and see, what position would you ascribe for him? Founder? Well, of course, we can confer on him, you know, as uh, the founder Have of the party. Tried? Because we take inspirations from, from him, I mean, totally, without any reservations at all. So we would have no difficulty whatsoever, you know, conferring on the former president, you know, as, as the founder of the NDP. Have In you, fact, we could go Have with you the, giving him that option? And what has he told you? Of course, for us, it doesn't even lie, you know, in, in the ambience of the former president to say he accepts to be our founder or not. We are conferring the title on him, you know. Have so you started the process? Really? Of course, that I'm, I'm sure uh, we are supposed to have launched our manifesto. This is, this is news to me, really. Yeah, we are supposed Would that to have... mean that very soon you're expecting him to tender his resignation from the NDC? Oh, not necessarily. Not time? necessarily. I, I think that presently, as we speak, you have the PNC, you have the CPP, you have the PPP, all of which take inspiration from Osajifo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. You know, but that does not in any way, you know, uh, make uh, Osajifo, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, a non-member of the CPP because PNC also takes inspirations from the from Osajifo. Okay, so the principles and ideals for who is the former president. Let me cut you in yeah. and go to Mr. Adams and put a direct question to him. Mr. Adams, uh, we're speaking to Dr. Uh, Hilarious Abiu, who is the deputy communications director of the NDP, and if you heard him, he his party would not. Um, you know, find it difficult at all conferring uh, an honorary status of founder on the former president, Rawlings. Uh, how would the president, the former president, take such an honorary uh, title? Yeah, first and foremost, I've looked at the constitution, the copy of the constitution that was brought along with the invitation, and the party recognized honorary membership where they can declare some people as honorary members based on what they have done and what they, they, they stood for. So if on that principle, uh, the, the deputy director of communication is saying they would want to uh, uh, confer on His Excellency, the former president, as a, a, a founding, uh, an honorary founding member based on the principles and the ideals, because is well captured in their constitution that they take inspiration from the 4th June 79 uprising and the 31st December 1981 revolution and the ideals thereafter. And that informed their decision to invite His Excellency, the former president, as a guest speaker on the, for the first Congress that was ever to be held by the, by the party. Are you, are, you aware, of, are you aware of any overtures of this nature? Um, not that has come to my knowledge, but if it is if it is made, I believe His Excellency will review it and look at it and possibly give consideration to it. Give consideration means he is likely to accept it, right? If, if it doesn't conflict with this way, he has said clearly that as a Democrat, as somebody who signed into being the 1992 Constitution, he believes and have confidence 
in parties that have integrity, parties that have a moral high grounding. And he believes that the NDP is one such party. If we believe in multi-party democracy, and our national constitution accepts so, every Democrat will endorse the establishment of parties, and will particularly happy that such parties will have high integrity, will have high moral uh, discipline. How many people are in MEP? Are you, are you happy with all these uh, uh, you can just developments a few months to elections? On the and how do you just think like that. that is likely to affect the chances of the oh. current president, John Mahama? Are there not too many distractions, really? I believe, if you listen to the founder of NDC, when he spoke as guest speaker at the NDP Congress, he said to some people, today will be joy, because they have been able to reach this far. But to others, it's a sad day. And he wished that we didn't get to the point where we've gotten to, where he's standing on a platform such as this to speak to a party that is being paid. Maybe if you want to put it that way, merely out from the NDC. Because if you look at the ideals that they have pulled, it's clearly what informs the establishment also of the, of the NDC. So it tells you he's not happy that we have to to get to this point. But is he not is he not behaving like a pest in the NDC's fortunes for the elections? I mean, if uh, the founder has been that uh, outspokenly critical of almost everything of the party from the time of former President Rawlings up to now, although he has softened his stance yes. with, uh, uh, he has softened his stance a bit with John Mahama, is he not? overstepping do you his think, boundaries. Do you think, my colleagues, that it is out of his criticism, that is why we have an independent candidate, very strong one for that matter, contesting against Niyama Chite in Kote Kole? Do you think that it is out of his criticism that you have independent candidate in Lejokuku? Do you think it's because of the criticism we have independent candidate in Eningo Pram Pram? Do you think it's because of the criticism that you have independent candidate in Ada? Do you think it's because of the criticism that you have two candidates for NDC in Okai North? Do you think it's because of the criticism you have independent candidates in KEA? You have independent candidates all over. You have one in Lower Maya and all many other places I cannot mention. Independent candidates in the deputy, uh, first deputy speaker's constituency and a host of other places. Do you think that it is because of that? It tells you that something has gone wrong for which leadership has failed to deal with. And this wrong is what he has been talking about. So he will keep and many other things that should have that should have, should so, have come along. So he will keep he will keep talking about these wrongs until the NDC loses, right? I mean, you made reference earlier to his comments about the fact that many of the NDC uh, MPs uh, candidates, sorry, parliamentary candidates, will lose uh, to independents or the NDP. When is he going to well, stop? Honorable, Honorable Inu Safusini is in your studios there, and he knows how elections are won. If you have independent candidates contesting against you, your chances of winning an election is reduced. And the, the management of dealing with independence is not issuing fiat. Waiting until few days to elections, you are issuing fiat. It doesn't work that way. You, tell me, tell this, me, Ms. Adams. This, this preparation for independence did not just start yesterday. It's been there, but it looks more like leadership closed their eyes to it. And Honorable Enusa knows this. They so, were so, like so it tell me, it tell me, Ms. Ms. Adams, Ms. Adams, tell me, on the face of all of these, how do you gauge the chances of the NDC going into this year's elections? Are you confident there's going to be a win for the party, of which you said you will support John Mahama, vote for him? I, I believe rightly so that uh, His Excellency President Mahama has brought a lot of hope into the body politic, and for that matter, the rank and file of the NDC. If he's able to continue inspiring the, the way he's doing, if he's able to put his foot down on one or two issues that needs to be done and direct affairs very well, his chances of winning the elections is very, very high. As to whether we would end up with huge majority in parliament or not, it depends on how the party leadership manage the process. Because take KEA. There's no way NDC will win the KEA seat if you have 
NBC incumbent MPA, the person of Dr. J.S. Annan contesting on the ticket of NBC. You have Dr. Tokwashi, the former MP, contesting as independent. And you have Nana Atwata of MPP, a former regional minister, contesting. And you have CPP candidate also there, with the flag bearer of PPP uh, uh, coming from that area and also having a candidate. There's no way you would you would easily win that seat with these two giants. There are many other places that you have independence. Take quality uh, quality that I talked about. So it's reducing your strength. Reducing in strength. Uh, Miss Adams, so thank you very much. Uh, we'll hold you, still hold you, and come back to the studio. So, Dr. Bill, I, I was talking to you earlier yeah. and raising concerns. These concerns, it's coming on and off. How does that affect your party's real chances? Because we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that your party is an offshoot of the NDC. The problems that uh, plague the NDC obviously will have rippling effects on your chances as well. Where do you stand? Well, I think that the, the presumption that the, 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 the NDP is, is, is completely an offshoot of the NDC, I, 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 tend, I beg to differ. You, you beg know. to differ. Because for, so? for instance, I, I am here and I've never been part of any political party ever in my life. You know, but I, I, I belong to the group of persons who believe that, look, that this country is getting tired of the kind of politics that the NPP and the NDC are practicing. Today in Ghana, you cannot define what is right or wrong. Because if the NDC does what is wrong and you say it, it tells you that, look, the NPP did worse. If the NPP goes wrong and you say, say, look, go back to the NDC and see what they did in the past. So I ask the question, has the NPP and NDC become the standard of measure of right or wrong? Certainly not. What is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. We are not aspiring to, 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 to do the things that are right, but rather making references and taking solace, you know, in the wrongs that others have done. You know, so the NDP is born onto the political scene to be able to cure this kind of, you know, mediocrity in terms of our politics. Today, you have a kind of justice system where uh, uh, somebody who is hungry and steals a, a piece of plantain goes to jail for three or four years. But a political figure that takes several millions of cities away walks free on the streets of, of Accra. Is that the way we, we, we call justice? Certainly not. So we are building a new political party that throws back power to the people. We want a political party that is able to cure elitism. We want a political party that is able to cure corruption, to kill all the evils of this society. That's why I mentioned my preliminary, preliminary comments. Now look, what is happening in the NDC is just a forecast of what is likely to happen you know, in the country. I was listening to a colleague of mine you know, uh, uh, back in the GSS, you know, who, who I spoke to a couple of days back. And he tells us that, look, I've had to throw my, 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 uh, my voter's ID away out of disappointment, and I haven't even registered yet. But I'm only waiting for a day when somebody will pick up the gun, you know, that we can deal with this uh, 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 greedy uh, uh, people in government, you know. So if you have people like that already, they are on the quiet, they are not speaking. But they are, they, are, they are worried that the resources of this nation are going down the drain whilst they are suffering, you know, in, in, on the grounds. So these groups of people, we are saying that, look, if you need an alternative political party to join, it is the NDP the that NDP. is the solution. Well, my name is Stephen Antti, and you're watching uh, PM Express on Monday, October 15th. We are absorbing the sizzling heat from the NDC and the NDP. We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to PM Express. My name is Stephen Enti, and I have with me Honorable Inusa Fosseini, Deputy Energy Minister, and Dr. Hilarius Abiu, who is a Deputy Communications Director of the NDP. We also have on the line Mr. Kofi Adams, who is spokesperson of the former President Rawlins. He's a suspended uh, member of the, uh, well, he's an executive member of the party who has been suspended. So back to the studio, let me come to you, Honorable Fuseni. You are aware that Nana Kufuado paid a visit to Mr. Rawlins, and shortly after that, he made the pronouncement that the NDC will lose out on major parliamentary seats. This is not good for the NDC, is it? Well, uh, for me, I think that pronouncements coming from my good friend, Mr. Kofi Adam, begs the question. 
begs the question because he knows quite well because he was the before he went up to become the deputy minister, I mean deputy general secretary, he was a deputy youth organizer, and he knows that there are, there are systems, always systems put in place to massage and ensure that people who lose out from I mean in elections, primaries and parliamentary primaries do not uh, I mean feel hard done by by the system. That's and what you do. Massage. That's what we do. You have to massage it. Yeah, he knows. I mean that's how it is done. Are you massaging? Somebody, are you massaging the issues creeping up in your party we, very we, well? We, seriously, seriously, NDC has been massaging, but everybody will have to know that as a party, even if N, N, NDP I mean endures and sustains, it will have a separate existence from the persons who have now created it, because it's a living organism. It, it has to grow and assume a separate existence, just like NDC. It will assume a separate existence. We have a responsibility. And I'm surprised. When we lost, lost in 2000, I started long ago as a person who believed in the philosophy of, of Jerry Rollins, as a revolutionary. I grew up to become the, the tame president of the party on campus of the University of Ghana. And stood my grounds against neoliberals who thought that a law student must not become a member of the NDC. We fought on. When we lost power, we came together and formed the Youth Forum and filled a critical vacuum. So when I hear doctors speaking and talking about moral high ground, I, mean, I become again. You wonder whether, again, it's whether a fallacy. he's in Ghana. It's a fallacy for a party to be formed just last month and be claiming to have moral high ground. You don't what think they have mean? a moral high ground? What does that mean? Is it because the former what first lady test, What leads tests have the they party? gone through? What tests has the party gone through to claim? That haven't gone through this test. Is the to NDC? Is the NDC? I mean, we should not be giving accolades to ourselves, but which clearly cannot be sustained. Talking about accolades, is the NDC not living in absolute denial of the the relevance of former First Lady Nana Kunedu Ajimaro? Nobody, Rollins? nobody can deny the relevance of former First Lady. And you do not think that she's least, strong least enough all, to snatch I, the presidency no, from your well, hands in an election? Nobody can deny that. And I have always said, I've, I've had the privilege to work to, to, to work for her in, in ways that she had given me work to do. How do you describe her then, and, from and, those and, experiences? And I, I say that clearly, no one. But I have also told her that, you see, you created this colossus, the NDC. This whole party structure and system was put in place by you and His Excellency Jerry John Rawlings. The party system is like that. If you see them and do a dispassionate observation of the structures, you are not going to come from outside and win against a system. How would you There's describe no her leadership capability? The leadership capabilities yes. in terms of the flag bearer or in terms of a former... In terms of her ability to win the presidency of this country. First of all... Snatching it away from first the of ambitions first of, of all, the NDC. I'm yet to have evidence, that she, concrete, cogent evidence, that a political party has been formed 52 days to elections and won elections. And they can draw the numbers to win. Well, so you don't if, think she If they can. draw the numbers to win, they will be certain... A standard in Ghanaian politics. Tell me in plain terms, you don't think she can. I don't, I don't think she she she's. I don't know how she's. You think she's to, a small fry? No. First of all, there are processes involved. The opening of offices, the create creating presence in all over Ghana, <laughs> electing. I mean, election of your. I mean, a, a, a constituency executives and branch executives. How are you going to do that in 52 days? You think she cannot win? It's not possible. But you didn't answer my question of what kind of a leader you think she is. Well, she is a, a very determined, consummate leader. She believes in what she, I mean, she, she stands for what she believes in. And, and, and that's what has led us to where she is, because she believes that she offers better alternative. But I'm saying that, just like the human body. That's a yes. very good description you yes, have. I, yes, I mean, I have worked with her. And Dr. But Abiyo. what I'm saying is that just like the human body as a unit, if one part is failing, you don't, you don't amputate it, you treat it. You deal with the problems. With the Dr. Problems. Abiyo, your party is aiming for the win. Some say you're dreaming, really, 52 or 53 days to elections. How are you going to win? Well, I think that the... Oh, you are not aiming at winning. Of course, we are aiming at winning. We are going to go into this election full swing, you know, presidential as well as parliamentary. And that's just a dream? Certainly not a dream. 
You know, again, um, I think that uh, a number of assumptions have been made, you know, that we are organizing this party in 52 days. Now, if you look at the numbers that were present, you know, at Babaira Sports Stadium, I'm sure that, you know, um, people are wondering Look how that. it came about those Look numbers. That. Okay? Now, indeed, Look the NDC has already started speculating that, you <laughs> that know... these are bust people. Can you imagine that? Did you bust them? Look that. Well, but of course. That's good. But, but of course, everybody who went to the Babas Yara Sports, including the NDC itself, certainly did not walk from, you know, the various parts of the country in order to get yeah. to so the they stadium. To that's a good one. That's a good one. So, so, good so, one. so you see, you're you that the crowds were no, bust. No, no, no. <laughs> certainly you have delegates, you right. know, who have to travel from uh, every constituency in this country to buy a sports stadium. They needed to go in a bus. So in that context, of course, I'll concede that they came with a bus. But if it's in terms of the numbers that were present at the Baba Yara Sports Stadium, I beg to differ. They were not bus, you know, to treat the sheer numbers, you know. We have said, for instance, that at the birth of the NDP, we've had to go consistency by consistency, empowering the executives of those uh, uh, consistencies, creating community organization bureaus, which is a semblance of the polling stations. So everywhere in this country where there's a ballot box, we have an executive structure of our community organization bureaus. Oh, no, about 13 established persons. No. on the ground, right? Yes. So. I, oh. Unfortunately, my my, my, my area branch, you're, you're not present. You are not manif you're not present in Tishu. No, no, you see, you're not present. Of course, we are. No, of uh, course, well, we are. Let me roll back you see, to you're Mr. Not Adams. Mr. <laughs> not even all the parties are present yeah, there. But I'm saying, <laughs> no, I mean, but I'm saying, you know, that we have been in we, this game for we, a very long time. We have had to do that. You, you know, know the rules. We know the rules. We have had to do that. Indeed, we even got our cannot claim that. Even we have. Well, of course, we yes. we have we have done had to get our permanent certificate. And part of the requirement, we needed offices in, offices in every district, you know, of this country. And we have had that, you know. We've gone beyond the district to get uh, consistency offices. Now, the fact that we haven't branded those offices and probably started using them, does not necessarily mean that we don't have presence in those uh, uh, constituencies. Now, what we have had to do, for instance, is to get representation from all those polling stations, as well as the consistency level and the regional level to constitute our delegates. Okay, now for instance, the, 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 the Upper East, for instance, that we're made to believe that, you know, the executives had resigned a couple of days, you know, to, to the Congress and therefore they were not going to be there. You remember when former President Rollins mentioned, you know, that some people uh, allegedly, you know, were housed and, and, and bribed, you know, to step down. Quickly, the presence, the delegates from the Upper East there, quickly, you know, uh, uh, responded, you know, to show that they were there, you know. Despite that, the, the, the executives, you know, have stepped now, down. Now, tell me, that there are some who so say that the NDP, everywhere. NDP yeah. and the MPP are working together to derail the chances of the NDC. How do you react to that? I think that if the NPP, you know, deludes itself into thinking that the NDP is formed, you know, to further their chances of winning these elections, I think they are making a very big mistake. Because what we are seeking to do... No, you didn't answer my question. Are you working together with the MPP to derail the fortunes no, no, so I was coming of the, to the NDC? So I'm coming to the answer that we are working, we are seeking to take the stronghold of the NPP and add it to the stronghold of the NDC. You know, for instance, the former first leader... Of the NDC, Rajiv. you've just said. Of course. Right? We are going to take those Is it the NDC or the MPP? Where, 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 where? Or I'm the saying NDP. that we are taking the, the stronghold of the MPP, which is Ashanti region... To add to the NDC. That's of the NDCs, which is in the Volta region, you know. You are taking... No, let's clarify. I am you're saying, saying that, that you're taking currently. the stronghold of the NPP... Which is Ashanti region. Plus the stronghold of, of the, the NDC... M to add to yours. Yes. So you have two strongholds. Precisely right. the point. But Just I'm saying clarify. that, look, we are talking about time. And I'm saying that beyond the, 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 the capab our capability to mobilize at each polling station, we have a presidential candidate which is, on, which is not unknown. In, in Ghana. But the former first lady only had one, barely one percent, when he she contested again the late President Mills. That you see, if you have a delegate system like the NDC right. has, Dr. Abio, I'll hold you and okay. go back uh, to the Kofi Adams, who has been very kind to be on the line all this while. Mr. Adams, I'll I'll ask you your final closing statements about this whole development of the NDP, the NDC, and the issues that are being thrown out in the public space, including the fact that the NDP is working with the MPP to derail the chances of your party, the NDC. What's your overall comments about all of these? 
Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, let me say that they, you would ask a question earlier which I wasn't too comfortable. First and foremost, linking the meeting, uh, the MPP led by his flag bearer, they call on the former president to his comment that uh, some of the M our MP candidates will lose their seats. I believe that call, I don't know how anybody will advise. I wish that you ask Honorable Inusa Fusini that if President Rawlings has sought his view that this party was calling on him as part of the process leading to peace building towards election 2012 to distress the atmosphere, whether he would have advised that he should not uh, uh, have that meeting. I hear many people say he shouldn't have, he, he shouldn't meet a party that is calling for this noble cause unless they were pretending if somebody is pretending you cannot tell from the person's mind you can't tell the writing in anybody's mind you are genuine you feel that the situation is stressful it needs to be distressed if that is the objective for which they are calling on you you want to give room for that to to happen uh what is happening in the ndc i believe that the ndc should be able to use the mechanisms honorable minister talked about to deal with some of the situation. But if up to this point, you still are having those persons standing their accounts that they are going to run as independent, it means those internal mechanisms have not been made to work and possibly those managing them did not manage them well. And that is why we are where we are today. As to NDP working with MPP against the interests of the NDC, that question, I cannot really fully answer it. But if the action of one of the key members of NDP and the person of Dr. Fea Jima is anything to go by, then you can conclude that the NDP is not working with the MPP to derail the efforts of the NDC. Because if that was the case, Fea Jima would not resign from NDC and uh, NDP and go and declare publicly that he supports the uh, candidature of MPP. If they were together doing that to destroy the, the NDC, they would have remained in there rather to be able to push such an agenda. So what I think is further engagement, that we should continue to engage ourselves. And so for those who want to go on insulting spree and think that today because somebody is not with you, so the best way to deal with it is to insult and denigrate that person, I believe that they should take uh, uh, caution and advice from the way the president spoke, and at least maybe the way uh, Honorable Inusa spoke today about the NDP candidates. So, even Mr. Mr. Adams, had, Mr. Adams, jumped, finally, he had, even though he had jumped the gun earlier on City FM, when he has to say what he says, and I'm sure that was what drew him to your studio this evening. Oh, well, Mr. No, Adams, no, no. finally, <laughs> before I let you go, tell me, I mean, briefly, because we were, we're out of time. Tell me briefly, if the NDC decides to expel the former president from the party, what will happen? I think then the NDC is preparing itself for, for a disaster. Look, over 80 percent or more of the loyalists of President Rawlings still believe that the NDC stands a chance and will work for the NDC. But any action, anything that they feel goes against the former president. I was just on phone with persons in Tamale, and Honorable Inusa knows this, that I was just talking to them to come to calm down. Anything that is done that they feel affects the persona and person of His Excellency President Jerry John Rollins, our former head of state and founder of the NDC will be very, very, very detrimental to the NDC, especially its bid to want to win more seats and uh, retain uh, the, the seat of what government, that is the, the, the presidency. Thank you. I don't think that they should allow any such thing to, to happen. Thank you if very even, much. If even they had considered his statement at NDP as an endorsement of the NDP. I don't think that is what we need at this moment. What we need is for them to solve the problems in the constituencies Thank and you. get out to campaign. Thank you oh, very uh, much, uh, Stephen, uh, Mr. Stephen, let me just make uh, my, my comments. Uh, Kofi, I didn't come here because of the statements I made on City. No. 
Mm. I came here because I was invited to come. And go I, read the statements. That was, that was just on the low side. No, no. I you can't be <laughs> now, go and read the statements. I know <laughs> former President Rollins, are, just like I made those statements, trying to espouse a purely legal position. On a, a, a former President Rollins knows that those statements I make, believing that those statements are right. Now, I think that we need not box ourselves into a situation in which we will disappoint those who have, conf who have reposed their confidence in us. Every day, people are looking up to you for leadership and direction. And when your leadership creates confusion, that's what happens amongst your followers. Right. So we have a responsibility to lead in ways that will give clear direction to the people that we know. Well, so this was in direct reaction to Ms. Adams. So, Ms. Adams, if you're there, uh, before you bounce off, uh, I'm asking, there are those who say that with all these criticisms, um, the former President Rawlings has lost his political relevance with the NDC. Would you say so? Not at all. Not, not, not at all. This is somebody whose respect in the party and across the parties keep growing for what he stands for. People may not be happy in terms of what he says for the for the electoral chances of, of the NDC. So as a result of that, they may not be happy. But it doesn't mean that he's relevant in our politics. So today. you think you think that he can still command the type of votes which uh, enabled former president, late president Mills, to win? Do you think he can still command course, these if, numbers if, for if John Mahama? If room is made, if 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 programs are done, if you don't win. Look at what happened before the launch of the manifesto. You bring an invitation to a former president Wednesday afternoon for a Thursday program, expecting him to speak to the manifesto at the Thursday launch. If at least you, you engage in such a way that that person's support is made mini meaningful and to manifest itself, it will yield to your benefit. But if you continue to treat him that he doesn't exist, others will take advantage of it. Right, thank you. Um, Inus Afasene, do you agree? Well, uh, all this is administrative, and I think that, and that's what I've always said, and I've not condemned former President Rawlings for saying what he said in Kumasi and in, in Ho, because I feel and believe that we should up, I mean, create democratic space for former President Rawlings to speak so that we will know. The only thing I have difficulties in understanding is the, the way he chooses to say them and where he chooses to see them. I think the democratic space ought to be created. Why? Even in family settings, you need someone to always remind you that all is not rosy. And that's it in former President Rollins. Right, we'll take a break. And Dr. Abiyu, when I come back, I'll take your final closing statement. Stay with us. Welcome back to PM Express, and we'll quickly run through some of your messages. Uh, Kanga Tando Timothy, you say that the Rawlingses can't make any difference on the NDC, and John Mahama will win the elections. One touch. This is from Kanga uh, Dadiasu in the Western region. And then Imanol Awute says that, please tell our current leaders that it's because they did not give respect where it was due. I blame the current party executives for all that's happening. No matter what, most of the grassroots vote for NDC because of JJ. NDC, do your homework well. And then Yakubu Abubakar says, with or without JJ, JM will still win this coming election. Amen. And then Jerry Elikem Glyph, you say that you're, you're sending this message from Peki. You say, little did the Rawlinses know that a day like this will come at the time the NDC was formed. Um, my question is, what happens if the NDP, in Mr. Rawlinses' own words, loses the moral ground in the future to contest elections in this country? Will that call for another party? To be formed, I seriously think, with all due respect, that the rolling systems themselves need a self-examination about their actions. And Boachi Okra says that, do the Rawlinses have advices at all? It appears he has allowed his wife's quest for power to overshadow his sense of judgment. Jezebel and Ahab from Boachi Okra, Newark in New Jersey. And then uh, this one from Ike uh, 
Joe Po. He says, I can vividly say the NDC's stepbrother is NDP. How come it's time the NDC worked out their own salvation and Ishaku uh, Bene? You say, Mr. Rollins has proved beyond doubt that he's a pain in the NDC's neck. And then Samuel Shamo Kaysen says, I personally think Papa Jay should be sacked from the NDC. He can't add any more taste to the rem remaining of the NDC. And then whether NDP or NPP, they can go to hell. The NDC will rule Ghana, whether rain or shine. That's enthusiastic. And Kunedu is simply a comedian. This one is from Kojo from Wa. Whose vote is she counting on to be president? Northerners or Voltarians? Even in her own house in Kumasi, she cannot command a single vote. Um, well, I'll, I'll leave the rest out. Spare us this. This is uh, from Kujowa. If Kofi Adams is not prepared to help the program, please let him go. We're finished with Kofi Adams. We're grateful for his time. And Dr. Abu, why are you allowing Kunedu to destroy you, the NDP? Kunedu does not wish any other person to become president unless you are an Akan, particularly Ashanti. This is from Kojo again from Wa. Don't waste your time on Kofi Adams because he would not say anything. Back to the studio. So, uh, in of Hussaini, I'll give, I'll give you one last question. One direct question. Should the former president, Rawlings, be sacked from the NDC? Yes or no? If he endorses his wife. He should be sacked. As a candidate. He, he should cannot be sacked. Be a member of the NDC. He should be sacked. He cannot be, because the Constitution is quite clear on that. So you think by going to the Congress to he make these support, I mean, support He has not endorsed he yet? Support, no. So what would you consider endorsement, really, after everything This is said. a candidate that you must vote in the 2012 election for the presidential, I mean, to be the president of this country. Imagine any other person other than your mama. He would have brought so, Dr. Abiu, in direct contravention of the Constitution. where is the NDP taking Ghana if it wins? In a few words. Well, I think that the N N NDC and the NPP have destroyed the moral fiber of this country. As and the NDP is reintroducing the moral fiber, right? Certainly, because so now you can't mention a political lady. party now without persons asking you for money. Because they have realized that the, the political elite only use them to win elections. And once they win the elections, they disconnect and connect with their merchant friends who gets all the contracts. You are going to connect with NDP the average NDP is going to restore power to the people, make sure that participatory democracy takes its roots in its real meanings. We want to give emphasis to women and, and the youth, and we want to provide inspirational leadership that carries all Ghanaians along, you know, to contribute meaningfully towards the development of this country. On that note, uh, from Dr. Hilarius Abiu, thank you very much. And then thank you to Honorable Inusa Fuseni and Kofi Adams, who joined us on the telephone. And thanks to you for sending us your messages. Join us again tomorrow for another engaging edition of PM Express. Okay, Good night. Thank you.